Hello everyone, Andrew here, and welcome to today's video, which is going to be all about the Amiga CD32, a very obscure console release back in 1993, so like right between the Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64 releases pretty much, uh, and it's something I'm assuming quite a few people have probably not heard of. I actually showed this in a pickup video a couple of years back, but at that time it was not in perfect working condition. The console had some problems, the controller, oh man, these controllers had a lot of problems, but now I have had all of those things repaired. And I thought that in this video, we would have a look at the three Amiga CD32 games that I own. And you can judge for yourself if you think picking up one of these for yourself and going through the trouble of maybe having to have it repaired and such is worth the trouble to play the games which are available for it. But before we dive into those, I do want to introduce more about the console itself. One thing you'll notice by looking at the front is that there are no controller ports there. You actually have to turn it onto its side and for some reason, that is where they were hiding. It is just awful having cords coming out the side. It's, you know, makes it really tough to organize your consoles nicely on the shelf because you always have these uh, cords coming out that make it, you know, odd to space things properly. It's just not great. I don't know why they couldn't have put those on the front. But otherwise, we also have a reset button. We have a light that kind of flashes when things are loading or operating. And like the original model of the Sega Genesis, there is also a headphone port and volume slider in case that's you know, something that you want to do. Flipping around to the back though, we have the on and off switch. We have a spot where the power cord goes into and you can actually use any red, yellow, and white AV cables to hook your Amiga CD32 up to the TV and don't have to worry about having a specific AV cable, which is nice. So if you find the console itself, all you really need to worry about is the power cord and the controller for it. Um, it is, you, know, you can use those generic AV cables and you're pretty much good to go. Oh, and also on the back, there is also a spot here where uh, it can be unscrewed and expansion stuff can be inserted into there. As far as the controller goes, this is the bizarre abomination that is the Amiga, uh, the Amiga CD32 controller. Uh, talking about Amiga and such, I should also mention that many people likely know Amiga uh, was made by Commodore, and Commodore made things like the VIC-20 computer, Commodore 64 computer, and of course computers under the Amiga line as well. I own the 500 and 2000 of those uh, over there. So this was kind of their idea of just, you know, taking the kind of computer component out of it and just making a console based around what the Amiga computers were. Which is an interesting idea to say the least. But over here you have your circle pad. It's not a D-pad, it's a circle. And unfortunately, these are notorious for breaking. This one right here is actually a reprinted uh, 3D printer circle pad. Because the original one is supposed to have notches around it that kind of keep it in place inside the controller. But all of those had snapped off because they're very fragile, very not very strong, very not very strong. That's good. Um, so yeah, that had to be taken out and thankfully it was possible to have a new one reprinted, which is not, you know, obviously identical, but it gets the job done. You also have a play kind of pause button here, which acts as the start button for mini games and also uh, four buttons on the right and also shoulder buttons on top, but just a very bizarrely designed controller You would think maybe I'm holding it upside down like these are supposed to be hand grips or something like that Like you know a proper controller would have Something that really allows you to grab that properly, but not on this one for some reason uh, Who knows what you know made them think that that was a good idea also right here we have, in terms of plugging it in, a 9-pin uh, plug, the, the very same that you would find on Atari consoles like the Atari 2600, as well as Sega consoles like the Genesis and Master System, so that's just a very generic thing right there. Apparently there is a mod that you can do to 6-button um, Sega Genesis controllers, which makes them work perfectly on the Amiga CD32. I haven't tried that myself, but I can imagine that would probably be pretty good compared to using this bizarre thing. Without further ado though, we are now going to jump into actually looking at the games themselves. You can judge for yourself if all this craziness that I just discussed is worth it to play uh, these games. There's probably some good ones again that I don't own, but these are the three that I do. And we're going to be starting with Nigel, Nigel Mansell's World Championship. Looks like racing, and it comes in a generic jewel case. I should also mention that when it comes to putting discs in, you just kind of pull up on the front like this, which, I don't know, I really don't like doing it. It, I always feel like it's you know it's gonna break. It's kind of kind of fragile. So that opens up. You put your disc in, and then you just lower it back down. But you want to be very careful with it because the hinge is definitely something that can break pretty easily if you're rough with it. So always be very nice. But with that said, it is now time for Nigel Mansell's World Championship. 
So there's the Amiga CD32 intro screen. It's not much, just kind of a CD spins across there, and I have no idea like why that's not centered. It feels like it's a mistake, but there it is. <laughs> and now there's a spinning globe. So yeah, this is probably going to be a racing game, as implied by everything that we've seen so far in regards to it. We'll see how it compares to other racing games. So far the music's actually pretty nice though. I mean, I guess that's what you'd expect from CD quality music, even for like 1993. Let's see, all these buttons here, which one should I press? The massive kind of startish button didn't seem to do anything. And if you don't press anything for a long time, it starts showing you the credits. Okay, there's the red button, and that brings us to what looks like a menu. Uh, even the reprinted uh, circle pad does not feel super comfortable to use. I guess we have all sorts of stuff. What can we see in the options? We can change our name, choose preferences. Okay, well, you know what? My name is Nigel Mansell, and there's nothing you can do about it. And what kind of preferences do you get? All this kind of stuff. All right, well, what actually matters is the game. So let's... Let's go to, yeah, let's do a single circuit, sounds very good. And wow, no wonder it's showing the globe. We got all these different selections here, but I think what we have to choose is it's kind of hard to see. The, man, those are some of the thinnest letters I think I have ever seen in a game. I don't even know if you guys are going to be able to read this. But I think this one says Canada. The Canadian flag is flashing. So yeah, that's what we got to do. Let's see how many people are out and about even during, you know, crazy quarantine time. Weather report. Uh, sure. Tune car. What can we do here? You can do all these sorts of things. You know, I think my car is pretty good the way it is. Let us... You know, why do we need to qualify? Let's just race this thing. Too many menus. Let's get right into it. I'm going to show everyone my home country. Look, see, that's Canada right there. You can tell because there's the, the Golden State Bridge. And let's see, what button is the accelerate button? I, maybe I should have read the instruction manual. Not that everyone is way ahead. So, for some reason, the yellow button, which if you were, uh, if you remember the controller that I showed a couple of minutes ago, uh, is for some reason the top right button. Why they would make that one accelerate, I don't know. Did that, did that sign just say GBA? But again, the music's very nice. Um, maybe... Okay. Doesn't seem to want to turn right as well as it turns left for, for whatever reason. And then I keep hitting the back of the cars. So yeah, this is, I guess, kind of what you pretty much expect from a 32-bit racing game. What, kind of, what do the other buttons do? Anything in particular. The L and R buttons don't seem to do much. The big button in the middle pauses, and then pressing again. Yeah, so here we go. This is a, it's it's a racing game. Not much else to say. We'll see how well I can do. Track actually looks pretty long. Oh, GBH. I'm guessing probably something to do with, with uh, one of the people who made this game, or it's one of those paid product placements. The original video game product placement. Okay, so yeah, this is this is awkward. Once you play 3D racing games, going back to a 2D one like this is just all sorts of awkward. But I do really like the music, though. There's one thing that I think really stands out, is that the music is pretty nice. I don't know if it's, like, appropriate racing music, but it's still nice music. And then, yeah, it's just like, how do you even avoid them? It kind of feels like you kind of have to run into the back of them, and then afterwards you can pass them. Where's my position? 6 out of 12, lap 2 out of 3. That was a... I did pass them. Sometimes in racing games, you never know if you're being lapped. Or it's like sometimes some cars don't count towards the position for whatever reason. I hate that. But wow, despite the fact that we literally stalled at the starting line for like 30 seconds, we're somehow up to fourth. So, so far, this game is good. I don't know if it's like, go through all the effort of getting a, a Amiga CD32 to play it good, but it's good. And if I had this back in the day, I think I'd be happy in terms of racing games and how they go. Oh, up to third. And then, yeah, suddenly you just hit the side and you're slowing down. I'm trying to look up at the map, but when you're trying to focus on the road, it's not really something that's easy to do. If I'm... What kind of dot am I? I mean, the only one that's not, like, repeated is white, so I'm probably the white dot. Uh, if that's the case, then the people in first and second are, like, way ahead. So I guess we'll just try our best to maintain third. Which one of these is the... The finish line, they kind of all look the same. Like that one had like a, a turn symbol on it, that uh, banner we just went under. It looks like we're kind of going to finish line, we have like another turn thing here to do. Yeah, so you really need to not just look at the road, but also I guess all the symbols that are going on. Man, <laughs> 2D racing games, not something I've played in a long time. Give me my Mario Kart 8. And uh, that's good, so now we have a flag waving, and is that it? That's it! So wow, we are Nigel Mansell, I guess yeah, we could have changed that name, we came in third and we got four points. Next track is Moo Moo Farm, <laughs> different game.
And what does that do? That just kind of probably boots us back out. I guess technically none of those people... No, actually, I would be the... Well, which one's the third one? Because the second and third positions seem to be about the same height, so I'm one of those guys. Which one? You can decide. I like blue, so I'll probably go with the blue one. And that's Nigel Mansell's Racing. It's a racing game on the Amiga CD32. Next up, we have Degeneration, Virtual Reality meets Action Adventure. And this case is not your typical jewel case. For some reason, I guess there was just no standardization. You see this a lot with some of the more obscure consoles out there. It's not like today where every PS2 game, same case. Every Nintendo Switch game, same case. Things back then were just not streamlined. And it opens up really strangely. It's kind of more like a cardboard texture than it is plastic. You get your disc in there, and then your uh, instruction manual slides out. even have a product regis uh, registration card that would look really awful if it was removed. So I'm happy that whoever bought this didn't send that in, because who really does ever send those kinds of things in? Uh, but yeah, this game also advertises a, a secret project is out of control at bi a biotech research lab. The building is in total chaos, the security system blasting everything that moves. All the employees have been killed or trapped. So uh, yeah, this is uh, going to be an interesting one, I think. So let's dive into Degeneration. And another long black screen, it seems like, after the... Um after the kind of intro there. I don't know why. It always makes you kind of think, like, oh no, maybe the game's not working or something like that. But the last one eventually did show up, so let's hope the same for this one. All right, so now we just have a gigantic eye. I don't know, I guess it's like the last game. They all have some sort of weird splash art at the beginning for some reason. Who knows what's up with that? Oh yes, Mindscape. It's a company I think most people have likely heard of before. Made many games, not just on the Amiga CD32, and a game by Robert Cook. Back when games were made by so few people that someone could actually, you know, name drop on the title screen right there. That's awesome. Alright, I'm going to press a button. Press the giant red button. And what does that do? It gives us another black screen. And then this. Okay. Version 1.0. Again, copyright 1993, uh, Robert Cook. And it looks like I can move around. The A, uh, I, I want to say the A button. The gigantic red button is now known as the A button. Because they don't really have letters on them. So you're just supposed to call them by their color, I guess. Green button tells me that there's no one to speak with. Uh, yellow button brings up a menu at the bottom. Or is that just something that might have popped up anyway? And the blue button appears to do nothing. Giant game pause button just kind of pauses the game. And all right, so I guess my goal then is to look for somebody to talk to. This was just like a jetpack I came down on. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. Is this a door? There's an arrow here. Alright everyone, well I'm stuck on the first screen of the game. Now I press the talk button on that yellow arrow. Unless I just can't hear it, there is no sound. Although maybe it's just because I turn my volume down too low? Let me see. It's just kind of like ambient sound. I'm gonna turn my volume back down. That's... that's interesting. Welcome! To, how would you pronounce that? Genok? Genok? Yeah, probably Genog. No, it's a Q, right? This is this is actually kind of kind of creepy, and it just kind of froze there. And I'm going the wrong way. Arrow's telling me to go back. That's it, everybody. That's the end of this game. Good night. No, I don't know why the arrow would point you to go in the other direction. It's kind of bizarre. And there's a big G Q. I was, gonna, I was gonna say I probably don't want to be in that thing's line of sight. Okay. So it looks like we got some stealth going on. This is the Amiga CD32's Metal Gear Solid, I guess. And actually, I didn't have to touch that. Oh, okay. I just kind of ran into it and then activated it. Took the turret away. Can I look at this computer? June 26th. Hey, it actually is almost June 26th. To Monique Resvi. I have been waiting for a very important package since yesterday. The moment it is delivered, you must notify me, JD. Everything must be backed up because of the quarantine. Uh, Monique, when the package comes, you must tell me immediately. It cannot wait. We are having difficulties with one of our prototypes. I will send an assistant down to your desk presently. You must remain there until he arrives. J. Derrida. Is this someone hiding behind the desk? Oh no! You're the courier, right? Why would you say, oh no, it's the courier? I don't want mail, take it away! Why would I ever want something that I ordered from Amazon? What is even going on here? Yes! Does that mean I can select that option? It's about time you got here. I had diarrhea screaming in my ear all day. And now, <laughs> and now this whole place is going crazy. I don't know what's in that package, but it better be diarrhea. Who is diarrhea? What is going on here? Uh, seems like we've gotten ourselves stuck in the middle of a text adventure. I've been waiting for someone to tell me. I haven't talked to anybody in a couple of hours. You know, it doesn't make any sense. I tried the telephone, the net, the emergency line. They're all dead. Well, the internet's dead. Just use, you know, your phone, 5G. 
Uh, where is Deridia? From what I've heard, he's somewhere on the top floor. Of course, of course the thing that you're looking for is going to be on the top floor of the building, which is fine. I always like exploring a good tower, but with this security system and all, you haven't got a chance of reaching him now. I need to know how to get there. I mean, it's not really much of a selecting an option when you're literally only given one option to select from. Hey, listen. Don't even try to get that package to him now. I've heard stories about what they make up there. Viruses, instant all sign? Uh, yeah, I, I think I was reading that correctly, but it just did not seem correct. You seem to have, you seem like a nice a nice enough guy. Stay here, can't be too long before someone from the outside figure out what's going on. You're not much of a hero, but diarrhea, whoever he is, needs the package. And you must be, there must be more people trapped up there. What is this, Die Hard? I mean, actually, if it is Die Hard, I don't really mind too much, because Die Hard is an awesome movie. And another option that's really only one choice. Suit yourself, it's your life, just do me a favor and watch Die Hard. So let's go and uh, Nakatomi Plaza, we're John McClane. And uh, yeah, I remember that part from the beginning of, uh, of Die Hard. It was very sad. So, it's loading it seems. Okay, so this is like a text mixed with an adventure game. Actually, I mean, it's, it's an adventure game with lots of text. So we're going to go over here, we can turn this off. Actually, no, I opened the door, it didn't turn that off at all. But you're gonna get zapped by the- yeah, I didn't tell you to come running after me. Hopefully I don't have to keep these people alive. Hopefully it's not like James Bond where, you know, you're gonna fail if you don't keep the hostages going. But I, I, I don't feel like I'm doing such a good job at the moment. I should probably try not to step on that flashing panel. There's something back here. I got laser. Oh no, no, I was hoping I couldn't be reached from there. It was kind of hard to tell the perspective, like if I was out of its line of fire or not. And that kind of resets the room, and the items seem to be back as well. So I'm going to pick the items up again, and then I'm going to see if I can use them. And the kind of jittering of my movement is because the circle pad is all kinds of awkward. Press that, and then- No, like, I never told you to come this way. Over here, man. Thanks for dropping by my- It's like- It-, it, fro it He touched me, and then he started talking, which froze my movement, and then we both died. That's- <laughs> That's great. We must be in the same room to talk, so that's the green button saying that. I don't have any grenades or anything. This is scene three, which I guess means like room three. This is actually really cool. And I feel like if the controller wasn't so janky, and the game itself wasn't so janky, like, I don't know why he has to run just because I opened the door. Maybe if I open the door and then I press the button, I can tell him to like stay put or something like that. Well, that was just my poor playing again. Okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. We're probably going to figure out this room, and I don't know, maybe we'll come back to this game someday. I definitely would be a lot happier if I wasn't playing this with the jank controller, though. I feel like it definitely hinders um, my actions and movement a little bit. So I'm going to come in here now. Like, no, please don't talk. Don't... Now suddenly everything's frozen and getting to this point. Do you know what's going on? Strange, I was going to ask you that. Why are you here? Okay, this is this is actually really fascinating. My brother asked me to come here, said he wanted to bring me in on something. Must have been awfully important. Usually he only calls me on my birthday. Well, happy birthday! What was so important? I wish I knew, but I'll give you even odds that it was some new shady deal. The scoundrels he's been dealing with lately, I don't know. I mean, the text is very small and thin. Hopefully it's uh, showing up on screen just fine. I'm... Germond. Germond. That's a name I've never heard. One of the three founders of Gnog. I mean, I guess that's probably where the GE part of that comes from. And I don't like that the text box, prog uh, the text box progresses before I press any buttons. Like, you know, I kind of want to comment on things. This game obviously was not made for let's playing being a thing in mine. Uh, where is... Last time I heard he works somewhere in this building. I mean, we already knew that, so maybe I shouldn't pick that one. Okay, so hide here. Don't move. So if I press the talk button, he says... He says a variety of different things. Seems to switch between like three different options. So I'm gonna go up here, get the laser, and then back, man, back! How do I equip the laser? Okay, pressing the giant red button now, shoots, and it actually ricochets off walls, which is kind of cool. And I don't see any kind of ammo anywhere, so I guess I can just press that as much as I feel like. Okay, can I blow up this machine? No, it does not look like I can. Yeah, oh, the button got stuck! Okay. So maybe that's what the arrow means. You have to take the people to the arrow. Interesting. Security key level 1. Is there anywhere where I can view my items? Does not appear to be the case, so I'll just have to- actually, L and R! Okay! Looks like something got brought up in the corner. Oh, this package is sealed with an electronic lock. Okay. Cool, so I can press the R button, it looks like, to maybe do something in regards to items. Interesting! Alright, I'm, in, I'm into this. I am very intrigued 
like where this is going but this could easily turn into like a 30 minute video just on its own so i think we're gonna stop here but someday we might have to have a look at this again this is pretty darn cool with that said though next game and last but not least, we have Whale's Voyage. Uh, it looks kind of more like a text adventure simulator sort of game. I've never been very good at these, uh, so we'll see how it goes. Can't guarantee I'm going to be any good at it at all. This kind of opens up like that, although for some reason someone ripped off the back of my instruction manual, but it does give us immediate access to a special message from Jim Nipple. So, I mean, th there's always an upside to every downside, I suppose. But without further ado, let us jump right in to Whale's Voyage. Wow, no long black loading screen that time. Instead, you instantly get this. Please stay tuned. Game is loading. Cool. And that uh, image was not really weirdly centered as one of the previous games was. Oh, we even have voice. Interesting. And also, once again, if you don't press something on the title screen immediately, you get the credits. <laughs> it's funny when games do that. Definitely gives like a computer vibe to it, which is funny because Amiga computer, the games definitely do feel like they, uh, you know, they belong on the computer. And we get the, you know, cutscene here because we did not instantly start the game. Ships for sale. I have no idea what to expect here. What the? Wow. Okay. This, this is pretty, getting pretty groovy. Hopefully this song isn't like copyright uh, claimed. And I think this is taking us back to the beginning again. Neo presents. Wow, well, okay. So, time to start. I pressed the big red button, and we are now actually heading into the game. So, we have a password option or a new game option. There actually was that n thing inside the case, that number. I wonder if that's a password, but we're not going to enter a password. Please stay tuned. I've never been told to stay tuned before when a game is loading. It sounds like a, a game show would use that phrase. I appreciate the, the note, though, because otherwise it seems like it's just kind of frozen. Wow, this is weird. Man, this system has some good music. Like, they really took advantage of the CD quality music, I'm not gonna lie. I have to create a character? Please select a father. We got the red alien dude. Like, I don't know. Sure, red alien dude, father, why not? We select the mother. Uh, sure. Enter his name. Uh, wait, nobody. Wait, go back. Go back. What's the back button? Is there no back button? All I did was press the red button. This wasn't really giving me an option to uh, enter any letters. Just gonna make sure the volume's not too loud here. But wow, that's some catchy music. So it looks like I have some stats I can redistribute. But sure, to all people who, you know, play RPGs and such, or tabletops and, and um, you know, things like that, what do you think the stats should most importantly go towards? I'm a person who usually likes putting them all towards, like, strength or something like that, uh, but I don't know, maybe people who are much more in tune with uh, things like this can tell me what they recommend. I would appreciate that. After he was, again, man, this console loves its uh, text that's way too thin. Rejected by his foster parents, I think that says. He grew up in the slums of a large suburb and got his first experiences from the hard and unjust life of the street. Okay. Select a primary school. Like, why? Why? Like, this is definitely just like a tabletop RPG. I didn't expect I'd have to, you know, write out somebody's backstory. And then, oh, I can only choose from these two high schools. Uh, chemistry University. Why not? I feel like this game is going to be all just me setting up the character. Push button to accept the character. Okay, the character is accepted. So, do I have to keep creating characters? Is that what I'm getting here? I can't just, you know, have like one character. I gotta create all the characters. Or maybe... There doesn't seem to be any back button. Okay, so this guy can be the father. This person can be the mother this time. And for name... Oh, you have to press up and down to change the character. Because that was absolutely obvious. So this guy can be... Uh, Ab... <laughs> That was totally unintentional, but sure, why not? Uh, and, you know, like I said, all under the strength. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to cut till I can actually play the game. All right, so we can finally enter the game. Thank goodness. Let us do that, and let's see how our family of 
I don't even remember any of their names. Actually, there was Abba. That's that's the memorable one. Uh, is going to do buy wares. I didn't expect to be advertised in this game. Sell wares. Uh, Hello, sure. merchants. Come on and have a look at our fine wares. Okay, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think I will. Uh, I can buy Brexit, apparently. How much money do I have? I have zero credits. I'm guessing I can't buy anything. What's so? What is the back button? What is like the designated back button on this controller? Because, like, I'm not really seeing one. And how do? So how do I get out of the screen now? Okay, just pressing down and a, a whole bunch of times apparently did it. <laughs> Equip whale. So I mean, how can I sell anything if I haven't bought anything yet? This is an economy scan. Sure. Extra engine. I mean, I have to buy them. Why do I have to buy them? Can't these just be things that I already own? So, wow, okay, so pressing down is how you get out of menus. Four buttons, one of them can't just be a back button. You have to press down to get out of menus. Select destination, planet, and start wheel. Sure, I'll just select the planet. Again, this is the smallest text ever. Castra, once upon a time, Castra has been the most important planet for trading. Sure, let's go. Can I go into the sun? Because that would be pretty cool. Please select destination. There's not enough fuel left to fly such a distance. Okay. And how do I get out of this screen? Oh, actually, okay, the, the circle thing there. Where am I anyway, right now? Okay, I can't fly to that one. Please select destination. Can't fly to Please that one. Destination. These people not think to buy some Please fuel before. Please select destination. Please select destination. Uh, and how do I go to this screen? I don't know. Left and right don't seem to want to do anything. The L and R buttons don't seem to want to do anything. Okay. So I'm guessing that top one is how much fuel... Like, fuel required would be 362, and I don't have any fuel? Because this is where I am right now, which is why I don't need any... But, like, how do I get... Okay, so then I just have to know that, like, pressing left and right gets back to here from that screen. Call somebody up! Let's... Phone is online. Please enter code. That's it. I'm gonna enter that number that was on here. Life save link. Seven, eight. I have no idea. This could be like the most end game code ever. Crap, I entered an incorrect number. <laughs> and there's no delete button. No, you gotta restart the whole thing. Okay, let's be very careful. Seven, eight, one, six, five, eight, eight, one, nine, five, eight, eight, one, nine. Let's go. How do I actually call? You hear the phone ring, but nobody answers. So I guess that number was a jip. And what else can I do? Use a glider. Okay, let's beam down. Alright, so that's what we were looking for all along. That's the thing about these kinds of games, is you can either spend half an hour reading the instruction manual and figure out everything to do, or it takes like half an hour of just your own experimenting to find out what the heck is going on. So we got no, bu no boot, ABBA, dash, exclamation mark, question mark, and question mark, BCE. Oh, and now it turns into like... Uh, or I can do some exploring. That's kind of cool. I can get behind this. Ouch! What is that because you walked into a wall? Ouch! <laughs> Doesn't have to say ouch. I mean, when you press up on a wall, I don't imagine that the character's smashing into the wall. I just imagine that they're not moving. But in this game, they literally just walk into the wall because that's how smart these aliens are, I guess. Bye! No, I guess that's, just, that's another ouch. So this is interesting. Is something going to happen at some point? I'm ready for the jump scare if there is one. Ouch! Well, I guess maybe I can press buttons to interact with things? Become targeter. Become waiter. Become user. I don't know what any of these options mean. I can select the characters at the bottom. Examine this position. It is only a red hydrant. Well, why is it there then? I mean, I guess <laughs> it's like to create the universe. You know, I mean, I feel like I'm so much more immersed because there's a red hydrant in the corner. Maybe it's useful at some point. How do I get out of this menu? Why is there not a back button? Why do I have to mess with the directional pad until it gets me out of the menu? 
Like, that was just it. I don't know what directional pa buttons I eventually pressed, but it got me out of the menu. Four buttons and two shoulder buttons, and not one of them can be a back button. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Can I talk to you? And I accidentally ended up in the menu again. Time to mash the circle pad until I get out of it. And there. <laughs> like, that's so weird. This is a weird game. And I feel, I feel like games like this can be very good once you figure out what the heck it is you're supposed to be doing. But as someone uh, who is, you know, trying to do this as part of a video, this is probably where I duck out. G uh, D Generation, definitely the most fascinating game out of the bunch. I am very excited to once again have a look at that. This game, uh, this game can probably be very good. The music was already very nice, if I just figure out what the heck is going on. Uh, but with that said, that's my look at the Amiga CD32. I hope it gave you a little bit of an overview of what you can expect from the console. Let me know what you think of it, if you have any experience playing its games. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for watching this. Hope you enjoyed. I hope to see you next time for something different. So thanks and see you later. Thank you so much once again for taking the time to check out my content. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it helps my channel grow. And I also have a Patreon page where everything that I receive goes towards making the quality of my work even better. So thanks again and hope to see you next time.